Today I'm here with Janine Driver, body language expert, because we say more than we think without uttering a word. Welcome, Janine. Thanks, Marsha. I'm happy to be here. Tell me why body language is so important. Numerous studies have been in body, uh, involved with body language. There's one in particular I like to talk about, which is MIT. MIT did a study, and with 86% accuracy, you can determine the outcome of a sales negotiation, a business meeting, even someone hanging up on the phone where you don't hear what they're talking about. You could determine how did that just go down. And what I say is the best way to influence a room or the best way to influence that phone call you're about to make happens before you walk in the room and before you make that phone call. And it has to do with your body language. Your body language is influencing how you talk, your tone, your pitch, and what you do next with your body language when communicating with people. So I say check yourself before you wreck yourself. Oh, that's great. So let's say, hypothetically, I'm getting ready to go into a really important meeting. What tips can you give me on how to make sure that meeting goes the way I want it to? There's so many. Uh, we have three power zones, our neck dimple, our belly button, and what I call uh, down here, you know, the lower half of the body. Mm -hmm. So we keep these three zones open. When someone is blocking any of these zones, it is hurting rapport. So like right now, so take your hand right here, there we go, and now take this hand and just put it down by your side. Just simply saying, okay, I want to be open during this meeting. Look at the people who are confident at already at the table. You judge for them yourself. Say, okay, that person looks really confident. What is it they're doing that makes you feel they're confident? Maybe they're doing like a little elbow pop. Maybe their hands are on the table when they're talking. They're like, listen, Mike, here's what I think we should do. Uh, so pay attention. Be careful of hiding your hands under the table. A lot of us sit with our hands folded. Yeah, make sure they're on the table while you're talking because if they're hidden, it sends the message to many people that you need reassurance. So pay attention to that. And last but not least, a biggie is uh, right. Right is for fight. So I'm on your more challenging side. If I want to persuade you, Marsha, I would prefer to be on your left side. So I say left for love, right for fight. When you see debates happening in the political world, you'll often see the person who's getting aggressive put their right shoulder into the lectern and be really aggressive. So if you want to persuade others, get to their left side. Think that's where the heart is, left for love, right for fight. Now, what I would want to do, though, is if I'm off to your left, I want to make sure I blade my right shoulder back. I don't want to give them my cold shoulder. So that's it. So be on someone's left side if you want to persuade them and influence them. Keep your power zones open in that meeting. Look around at other people, with their, how they're confident, and keep your hands seen at all times. Oh, those are excellent tips. So I'm going to do a little shoulder oh, pop this. here. I love it. And I'm going to ask you something that's a little harder to figure out. When somebody shows up, let's say you're on the phone or you're in person, and you can tell they're really angry. Yes. What do we do in that situation? Is there something we can learn from not only their body language or maybe how we encounter and interact with them that would make the interaction go more positively? I, I got to tell you, you know, I, so I'm, I, I went to college, I've taken ad, some advanced classes, and nowhere along the way do they teach us some of these basics. And what I, what I want to talk about with anger is anger is almost always a secondary emotion to something else. So anger could be fear, it could be sadness, and it could be anxiety. We especially see this with our sons and with men because men are trained not to be vulnerable, not to cry, not to show anxiety. They have to be in control. And so when anxiety or sadness or fear creep in, the way they show up is with anger. You'll get this with some alpha females, and you'll get this with everybody in general when the stress is high. I've already answered this question. I've already said this 10 times. I've already filled out this paperwork. You're not listening to me. Can I talk to the supervisor? Supervisor, supervisor, supervisor. You know, like they just literally um, will come across as angry. The problem is, Marsha, if someone comes in with perceived anger, they are perceive, you're perceiving them as angry, and you go in with real anger, now it gets really messy. Complications happen, relationships get destroyed. When If we just took a second and said, wait a minute, is it possible this person, person's going through something that could make them sad or anxious? I had a, a woman come up after an event a couple months back, and she was crying. And she hugged me. I go, what's going on? She goes, uh, I married my high school sweetheart. We have three daughters together. Our youngest daughter is eight months old. And my husband just found out he has this disease and uh, his muscles can't support, his joints can't support his muscles, so he moves like a robot. And he had to quit his job with the New England Patriots as the senior designer. He's a designer, it's his dream job. And he had to quit it and he's a stay-at-home dad now. And he keeps calling me a workaholic and he keeps yelling at me every day. And we just hired lawyers just a week ago. 
And when I get back from this training, we have a meeting with the lawyers because I said, I can't be with someone so angry. We're getting divorced despite I still love him. And she said, what I realized from your talk today is maybe, just maybe, it's fear. Maybe it's anxiety. He doesn't know his place anymore. Where's his significance? And she walked out of my event when I said it, she said, and called him and said, I love you. I'm not going anywhere. We're going to keep this marriage together. I think you're not angry. I think you're scared. That is the ultimate compliment to me. When we can see the message behind the message and we make smarter decisions and we keep teams and families and people together, that rocks my world. So there's a hidden message behind anger. Wow. That's amazing. Changing lives every day. Janine, <laughs> thank, thank you for being here. Thank you.